Welcome to a special midweek edition of the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup, bringing you all the highlights from Tuesday night's Cinch Championship and League One fixtures. Coming up, playoff hopeful Airdrie spring a shock away to league leaders Dundee United. Queen's Park hit our both for six in an impressive display at Hampden Park. And Air United come out on top in a dramatic seven-goal thriller at Somerset. The league leaders welcomed Airdrie to Tannadice on Tuesday evening. United starting on the front foot, but unable to find a way through early on. Having scored from a corner kick at Morton on Saturday, Callum Fordyce almost repeated the feat here but his shot was well stopped by Jack Walton. Glenn Middleton bagged his third league goal of the season on Saturday. He almost made it four from this free kick, which cracked off the crossbar. Into the second half, and an early chance would arrive for Tony Watt at the back post, but the striker's effort flew well over the top. In an even game, a moment of magic was required to break the deadlock. Airdrie providing it just shy of the hour mark, with neat play from the left and a lovely cross which was headed home by Gabby McGill. A fantastic leap from the attacker, whose header gave Walton no chance. United's hunt for a quick equaliser almost came to fruition from a similar situation. An excellent cross into the box, but Kevin Holt's header was well held by Josh Ray. The home side's most likely route to goal seemed to be via one of their many aerial threats. Declan Gallagher going close here from a corner kick. But with United pressing high for a leveller, space opened up for Airdrie in the 94th minute. Substitutes Nikolai Todorov and Josh O'Connor combining, with O'Connor keeping his cool in the 1v1 and making it 2-0. A massive win for Airdrie, which keeps the Diamonds firmly in the playoff hunt. Callum Davidson's Spiders played host to 10th place Arbroath at Hampden Park. It didn't take long for the hosts to open the scoring, with Ruri Payton making it 1-0 after just four minutes. Killian Sheridan laying one on for his strike partner, who had the easiest of tasks. Soon enough, it was Sheridan making his own presence felt in front of goal. His eventual deflected effort being cleared off the line by Scott Stewart. But Queen's Park's number seven didn't have to wait too long for his moment to arrive. 14 minutes on the clock, when Sheridan turned home an excellent low cross for 2-0. The Irishman with his first championship goal of the campaign. The home side were in full flow in the first half of this one, and made it 3-0 in the 23rd minute. Sheridan and Peyton combining once more. Peyton getting his 14th league goal of an impressive season. And it could have been 4-0 soon after. Sheridan though unable to beat Max Boric in the Arbroath net this time round. Our both struggled to create anything clear-cut in a one-sided first half, but that didn't stop on-loan Dundee man Charlie Riley from almost scoring one of the solo goals of the season. Queen's Park picked up where they left off after the break. Callum Ferry's long ball on 49 minutes feeding Dom Thomas, who stayed composed and made it four. The Spiders showing their versatility in this one. and another long ball would undo the Arbroath defence in the 62nd minute. Goalkeeper Boric and defender Connor Teal colliding, allowing Liam McLeish to take advantage and add a fifth. The young midfielder notching his first professional goal at Hampden Park. Long balls continued to play havoc for the Arbroath rearguard. 85 minutes on the clock when Stuart McKinstry latched onto the end of this one before biding his time 
picking his moment and making it 6-0. The former Motherwell man showing excellent composure for this one. But Queen's Park's attacking play was relentless. The hosts going a whisker away from number 7 through Mackenzie Cars. And there would be one last chance for the Spiders. An excellent cross into the area with McLeish nodding narrowly wide. An incredible attacking display from Queen's Park at Hamden. Partick Thistle travelled to air aiming to return to winning ways. The Jacks going close to an early opener when Aaron Muirhead's effort was clawed off the line by Joshua Clark. The first goal of the game would arrive in the first 15 minutes, but came for the home side. Nick McAllister pouncing on a loose ball in the box to make it 1-0. McAllister getting on the score sheet for the first time since late July. Brian Graham continues to be Thistle's main goal threat in attack. The striker though, unable to nod this one home at the back post. But the striker had the scent for goals and would level things up in the 33rd minute. A bouncing ball in the air box with Graham in the right place to prod it home. The striker making it 14 goals for the season. Parity would last just 10 minutes. Air playing it patient in and around the box, with Kurt Willoughby there to restore the honest men's lead at the back post. The Englishman getting his first goal for his new club. And it wouldn't be long before Willoughby would get another crack at goal. Ayers number 9 being sent in behind in first half stoppage time and finishing beyond Ross Stewart for 3-1. An excellent finish from the on-loan Oldham Athletic man. Ayer carried their forward momentum into the second half. Willoughby denied an excellent hat-trick by a flying Stewart save. Former airman Tommy Adeloy has impressed during this season's loan spell at Partick Thistle. He went close to pulling another goal back for the Jags, but fired over the top. But the striker would get a second bite at the cherry on 78 minutes. A wicked delivery from Harry Milne, allowing Adeloy to poke home for 3-2. Game on at Somerset Park. and with momentum on their side, Thistle pressed hard for an equaliser. 83 minutes on the clock when Milne's cross was turned in at the wrong end by Jack Sanders. A huge chunk of good fortune for Thistle, but a just reward for their attacking endeavour. But in a game of twists and turns, there would be one last sting in the tail. Just a minute on from Sanders' own goal, Harry McHugh produced a moment of brilliance to make it 4-3 to air. An outstanding piece of finishing, capping off a thrilling game at Somerset. Two of the Championship's promotion hopefuls faced off at Starks Park. Lewis Strapp's long throws giving Morton a potent attacking weapon in the first half. Clear-cut chances were few and far between in a cagey encounter. on loan defender James Brown trying his luck from distance for Wraith, but missing the target. The first real notable save of the match came from Wraith's Kevin Dabrowski. He had to be alert to keep out this looping volley from Alan Power. It was a game in which set pieces looked likely to prove pivotal. Morton's Jack Baird nodding this flight of free kick just wide of the mark. Into the second half and Strap's long throws continued to play their part. 
Baird going mightily close with this glancing header. Morton continued to have the better of the play, but struggled for a clear sight of goal. This Cameron Blues strike being well dealt with by Dubrovsky. And the away side would go even closer still from a corner kick. The ball breaking for Strap on the edge of the box, whose seemingly goal-bound effort was kept out by teammate Dara O'Connor. Morton huffed and puffed an attack late into the game, but Wraith's defensive efforts were enough to keep the scores level. Nil-nil the final score in Kirkcaldy. Dunfermline aimed to build upon Friday night's win in Glasgow as they travelled to Inverness. Midfielder Matty Todd with an early strike which struck Sean McAllister in the face. The home side were handed a big chance to open the scoring in the 17th minute when referee Gavin Duncan pointed to the spot for a foul on Cammy Kerr. Billy Mackay stepped up to take for the Cali Jags but was excellently denied by the strong palms of Dennis Mehmet. Dunfermline's best chance of an even first half would fall the way of Miles Welsh Hayes, the unknown Livingston fullback heading just off target. Cali's next opportunity would arise from a corner kick, a good ball into the area being headed over the top by former Dunfermline man Danny Devine. The home side continued to create half chances after the break. This one coming from good play down the right, with McAllister unable to find the net. Having spurned an opportunity in the first half, another chance would come the way of Devine in the second. This one trickling just beyond the post. Cali's set pieces were a constant threat throughout the match. James Carragher sending this headed effort over the top. Dunfermline's chances were limited in a tight second half. Ewan Otto managing to create a slight opening for himself late into the game, but unable to find the goal. It ended goalless in the Highlands. Now for a look at the latest standings in the Cinch Championship after a full card of midweek fixtures. Wraith move level on points with league leaders Dundee United thanks to a home draw against Morton. Wins for Ayr, Airdrie and Queen's Park keeps all three sides in with a shout of the playoffs. Whilst our Broth's 6-0 defeat at Hamden leaves the Lichties seven points adrift at the bottom of the table. Sterling welcomed promotion hopefuls Hamilton to fourth bank on Tuesday evening. New signing Josh McPake, giving Aki stopper Dean Linus something to think about early on. Beano stopper Blair Curry would have work to do soon after. Ewan Henderson's deflected free kick, testing the keeper's reflexes. The closest that either side would go in an end-to-end -end first half would be when Regan Tumulty swung a dangerous cross onto the head of Kevin O'Hara. The striker's effort thwarted by the woodwork. O'Hara remained Aki's most likely goalscorer before the break, this effort shortly after being lifted well over the top of Curry's goal. Sterling were on top for large spells in this one, midfielder Jack Leach taking charge after the break and going close with a low strike from outside the box. Having almost provided an assist in the first half, Tumulty hunted down a goal of his own in the second the right-back pulling this one just wide with his left foot. Arguably the best chance of the game would fall for Sterling newbie McPaik, the winger just losing his cool at the vital moment here. Substitute Mikey Hewitt has found the net just once for Aki's this season. His wait for a second will go on at least a little longer after this one rolled wide of the goal and Sterling went close to finding the latest of late winners in added time. Lewis Milne with a thumping strike at goal, but Linus was equal to it. A point apiece at fourth bank.
Here's how things sit in Cinch League 1 after the division's one and only midweek fixture. Ackies are now 16 points behind league leaders Falkirk after the goalless draw at 4th Bank, whilst the home point for Stirling moves them into 7th place above Queen of the South.